Today on Drawbly, I am drawing... Black and white base studies. Click that subscribe button if you are new around here. And comment below with other ideas of what we can do to improve our art. So, we are doing some black and white value studies, or portrait studies, with values. Uh, and I'm going first. I'm first up on this endeavor. Abby's will be very soon. I don't know about you and your process, but for me, I started off with just a simple pencil. I, I can't remember, I think it's called the peppermint pencil. I like that in one. Procreate. Mm -hmm. It's the one that I always kind of uh, gravitate towards. I don't really use many brushes myself, but I start off with a really rough sketch and then I start putting in my values. I also, uh, for both of my, I do two different value studies here. I do not sample any values from my image. Uh, instead, my uh, goal was to use a very small range of values. Uh, so I have a dark, I have a light, and I have a midtone. Uh, I recently learned that um, for these kinds of value studies, you really all you need is two or three different values, and that is enough to uh, carry you forward. Hmm. And um, if you are going to do a midtone, you should make your midtone much, much closer to your highlight or your light side uh, than this to your dark. Oh, really? And the reason for that, or at least I believe the reason for that, has something to do with the fact that uh, in light, you can see a lot more detail. So you are, you know, ostensibly creating the effect of that. You are having more information in the light side of things. Hmm. Whereas your dark, you know, everything kind of, um, I'm not a huge fan of this saying necessarily, but it's what's called in digital art, crushing your whites and crushing your blacks. Mm -hmm. um, that idea is that you are taking the value range and you are squashing it and narrowing it mm. so that it is you know, much more simple. So that is what I am doing here. I am taking my dark value range and I am crushing it to narrow it to all read in this you know, singular shape. That's cool. That was an interesting thing to learn. I didn't know that actually. Yeah, so um, I, I really, I don't know about you. You can tell me maybe later or even now if you want, but I had a lot of fun working on this. Um, I really like values. Um, I really enjoy working on them. They are probably, doing something like this is probably the closest the closest thing to sculpture for me in, hmm. in 2D art mm -hmm. and, you know, working this way at least. Interesting. What about you? Um, I mean, I enjoyed it. I think my workflow is definitely different. What I take away from it is going to be different, but a lot of that just comes from having different uh, reference material as well. I didn't use a high contrast image, although I initially searched for one, I ended up going with something with a lot more moderate contrast, um, but now seeing yours, I wish I had, because uh, it feels like there's a lot to learn here. It looks really cool so far though. I feel like you've already created something that's fun to look at. Thank you, yeah, I do a little little extra here. Um, after I did my three values, so the dark, light, and midtone, mm -hmm. I ended up going back in, uh, I ended up getting a transitional value that um, uh, was just like a little lighter than my darkest dark so that I could have a step between. So you'll see how I'm like creating that in between in a few mm. areas so that it doesn't just go directly from my lightest light to my darkest dark. So there's like a yeah. little transition. Kind of gives it like that tune shaded feel, um, which I enjoyed a lot. But yeah, um, I, I just enjoyed working on this. This really makes me want to try uh, that practice again of putting my iPad in grayscale oh, yeah. and choosing a color palette. We should totally do that. I again. would love that, but I would be more intentional with it and maybe like at least see the color palette that I'm using beforehand. Oh, uh, I don't know. I feel like that almost ruins the fun. What we could maybe do though, what if I chose a color palette yeah. for you and you chose a color palette for me? Yeah, and then I would start by, like you said, choosing a value that's like meant to be the darkest, the lightest, and then the one very close to the light, 
And then if there's a fourth or a fifth value, saving those specifically for the end. They're like little accoutrements. Mm -hmm. One thing I wasn't sure about with this actually, and it's what I'm doing right now, which is like going in and um, actually using a, a paintbrush to like very gently uh, control some of the values. You can actually see the side of her face there because I've gone over and very gently mm, like painted some I of that. I do see that, yeah. So it's like very subtle, but um, I, I wasn't sure if it was like even worth doing, like if it was worth the effect. Um, but it was something that I played with, you know? Looking at it now, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'm just blending right now, but I fade most of that out, mm -hmm. but yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't too sure about that side of the face and like if I should really push that or hmm. not. So, you know, just learning, experimenting, playing around with it, seeing what works. Mm -hmm. I think I ended up getting rid of the blending over there on the dark side of the face. Mm -hmm. Just because if it's dark, you can see less uh, information in general. Okay, yeah, that's true. I think it turned out, I mean, great either way. But I did really like that idea of working on some like animals or portraits mm -hmm. and having some random random uh, color palettes. But yeah, there is my first uh, portrait. Hopefully you absolutely adore it because I worked <laughs> so hard on it. I love it. Uh, this one actually took 45 minutes. So oh wow, you did a lot in 45 minutes. Got done with That's that one great. pretty quick. Yeah, thank you. You actually saw me work on part of this one. Oh, did I? Yeah, we were at Starbucks and I turned around and you were like, this is bad. And I was like, you're right. I will be continuing to work oh, on it. Oh, right, because you showed me a piece of her jaw and I was like, her jaw feels like it's shifted over a bit. But that was like my only thing, which isn't even really the focus of what you're trying to do here. This one turns out um, not, not as good as the first one. Um, and I think that is mostly due just to the angle of the face. Mm -hmm. uh, I am obviously, as a you know relatively unskilled 2D artist, not going to be able to do a face in perspective versus a face that's staring directly mm -hmm. straight forward. That's obviously a lot easier than uh, something like this. So I do the exact same thing as last time. I start with just a pencil and uh, I just start kind of roughing in some stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, specifically what I'm looking for when I'm doing this is obviously just the quick general shape of the head, but I'm also, if you see, like I'm not really doing any facial features. I'm drawing the separation between light and shadow along the face. So that's like what I'm outlining there. Up. I like, see that, that's what I would do too. I'm crawling that uh, yeah, distinction yeah. up uh -huh. the face, like that little marching ant line right? Uh, with the selection tool, which is what that's called. But um, yeah, I, I, again, I just really enjoy doing these. I feel like I could do these all day. Like if this is all I did for all of Drawbly. That's awesome. <laughs> I, would, um, I love that you found something that you like really enjoy, like multiple, all kinds of iterations of. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, it's the closest to sculpting because it is um, painting light and shadow. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, I, I'm really excited to do more painting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, drawing is a fundamental of painting um, because, you know, you're working with with shape, you're representing form in 3D, mm -hmm. um, with contours, etc. And uh, it's, you know, extremely important and something that I need to get better at. And it's something that I don't want to sleep on. You know, I, I don't want to just mm -hmm. work on painting and not like, or completely forget about drawing altogether. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the distinction. It's something that I'm like too. very cognizant of because if it were up to me and I just like didn't really care about improvement at all, mm -hmm. I would probably not do any like pencil stuff, any drawing. I would just say line is stupid, I don't care about line, yeah. and now I'm just gonna make shapes. And shapes and selection tool. Huh, interesting. That That is a cognitive or a conscious decision on your part. In the future, um, you know, once I do kind of get better at line work and better at drawing, I think it is something that I will do a lot less of. I'll be more interested in making like big giant paint strokes that define something rather than uh, trying to continue to fight with line. Hmm. Although hopefully in the future I won't fight with the line quite as much. <laughs> uh, me you and do line, fight with the lines, that's yeah. all right. <laughs> me and line, we go way back, very troubled, um, 
troubled past. <laughs> yeah, we're working through it. It's a tough relationship. You'll get there. You'll get there. Every line becomes more confident than the line before it, right? Mm, mm. Somewhat. Somewhat. At least. Sometimes it doesn't feel noticeable. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially like warming up before and after warming up with drawing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's a huge difference between like, oh, I've been drawing for 10 minutes versus, oh, I've been drawing for an hour. I feel like my lines just go right where I want them to go a lot more often. Yeah, there's like this gray area at the start and at the end where it's like it peaks somewhere in the middle where you're like at your best. And then you also like go from being warmed up to like you get fatigued Fried. and you're yeah. like, then it starts going down. I see again. that a lot at the end of what I've, what I'm working on where I'm like really strong in the middle and then the stuff I do at the end, I'm like, why did I, why did I not just stop <laughs> and come back to it later? Oh, do you feel like that's a common thing? Like where you push, you take something too far? Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. What do you, what do you mean by like too far? Well. I keep working on it when I'm in a state where ah, I should have okay. at least taken a break. I gotcha. Because then I end up phoning in whatever it is I'm doing. Mm. And it Don't really, phone it. it puts a very sour cherry on top. Oh, yeah, a rotten yeah. cherry. Uh, not rotten. Yeah, rotten Poop cherry. Poop sprinkles. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard me talk about the poop sandwich before, haven't you? The compliment sandwich? No, the poop sandwich. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will have a video in the future about the poop sandwich. Oh my gosh. Sure. <laughs> it's a great topic. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're a way back fan of Folygon, you guys know. You guys know about the poop sandwich. Somebody in the comments let me know if you know about the poop sandwich, please. <laughs> 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 so I don't sound like a complete psycho. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Hey, but hey, this is going really well. Your black and white study. I like it so far. I wonder if this is where you turned to me and said, hey, how's it going? And uh, I was like, it is roughly around that point where I adjusted the jaw. Mm -hmm. um, that back corner of the jaw needs to come down quite a lot. Look at the oh, angle yeah. from chin to jaw, how my angle goes up at maybe about a 10 or 15 degree angle. You look at her jaw, right. it goes down. You gotta look for those angles. You gotta look for those proportions. Mm -hmm. Angles are a good way to uh, figure out proportions. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you said something about, um, and this is very common, and I don't mean this as a, a slight in any no, way, no, no. but people will often uh, critique something uh, by saying like, oh, um, this is, you need to do this. And uh, I think you said you need to slide her jaw over. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, that is potentially part of the issue, but it's not so much that the jaw needed to slide over uh, that I needed to listen to. It's more so that I needed to listen to you saying that there is something wrong yeah. with the jaw. Yeah. So um, with a lot of critique, I recommend not necessarily taking the solution that they give, but more so looking at why they're giving a solution, mm -hmm. uh, which is that there is a problem with it. Yeah, that they're drawn to some part of your drawing where something is wrong. It's just sometimes it is hard to articulate what is exactly off. Yeah, and again, I don't mean that as a slight against you in any way. No, I no, have no, been no. critiquing art for a very, very long time, and I have uh, seen and heard it all, and I know like uh, kind of the patterns and, and what to look for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pretty much almost finished here with my last uh, value study. I actually do feel like I learned a lot from these. I tried to play around with a little texture at the end. I, I found like this it. like, I don't even know what the brush is called. It pops up in I've so seen it. Much. I've used it before. I learned what it was it's called fun. once it's too. It's fun. Yeah. It's like a little hatching. It's the same kind of hatching style they use on like the figures on dollar bills. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. There's a name for it, and I forget what it is, but oh, really? that's how they shade those old timey uh, portraits of that kind. No way. What? Yeah, they, yeah. Like something like this? Oh, is it the name of the texture? Mm -hmm. Does it have like a, like a herringbone esque name? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. That's I cool. don't remember what it is, but probably it's the name of the brush, actually. Yeah, yeah. it mm -hmm. might be. That's really cool. Awesome. Well, that turned that. out really cool. Aw, thank you. Yeah. Not, um, not you know, my best, not, not my bad, worst, though. but maybe not bad for uh, where I am. Yeah. And hey, continuing to get better. That's the idea. And you can continue to get better, potentially, <laughs> by clicking that subscribe button down below. And please comment below with ideas of what we can do to improve ourselves in the future. And this is the part where we say... Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. We'll have to look up the name of that brush. We will, because then we can start creating our own money. Our own money, yeah. <laughs>